Hi, this is Steve DeMossi and welcome to Uncharted DIY. For today's project, I'm going to show you how to make a rain barrel out of a 55 gallon drum and parts that you can find at any hardware store. My rain barrels are finished and operational, but I'm not really going to leave them this color. The first step in this process is we need to gather the supplies. With the exception of the barrel, everything should be available at the local hardware store. Visit UnchartedDIY.com for a complete list of materials and links. For the barrel itself, it might be easiest to just do a web search for 55 gallon barrel or 55 gallon drum and see what comes up. I picked up mine for about $15, but they were discounted because of the color. But that's an easy fix. I'm just going to paint them when I'm finished. You could use spray paint or just use house paint to match the color of the house. I decided to make my barrels out of steel, but you could also make yours out of plastic or poly. The procedures would be pretty much the same. So one feature that I thought was essential was having a removable lid. It makes it a lot easier to put this together and it makes it a lot easier to clean it. The list of items to get from the hardware store include a downspout filter, a flexible downspout extension, a five inch hose clamp, a three inch PVC adapter. The technical name is a DMV male adapter. But what you're looking for is that the female side is smooth and the male side has threads. A three inch PVC DWV clean out adapter. Again, it's three inches, but this time the male side is smooth and the female side has threads. A three quarter inch PVC female coupling adapter with at least one side threaded on the inside. A three quarter inch PVC 90 degree street elbow. This has threads on the female and the male sides. You can see that the 90 degree street elbow will fit inside the three quarter inch adapter. A three quarter to one and three quarter inch hose clamp a three quarter inch hose bib, a five eighths by three quarter inch hose barb adapter, a three quarter inch by half inch garden hose adapter, hose washers with screen, silicone caulking, and for the overflow hose, half inch poly tubing. Now I had two barrels to do, so it was cheaper to get a hundred foot length than to get a couple of 20 foot lengths and some way to support your rain barrels off the ground. I used concrete blocks for mine, but you could use wood or just about anything else that you can build a sturdy stand for. Now, keep in mind when a 55 gallon drum is full, it's gonna weigh over 400 pounds. So make sure whatever you pick is nice and sturdy. And of course the barrel itself. As far as tools go, you'll need a drill with a one inch hole saw for cutting the overflow and the hose bib holes and a jigsaw for cutting the top hole. Here are the components for the overflow. You've got the PVC coupling adapter, the 90 degree street elbow, and the hose barb adapter, and you can see how they go together. I ended up making a spacer because the street elbow doesn't fit all the way down into the coupling adapter, so there wasn't a tight seal around the overflow hose. So I took a three quarter inch PVC T fitting that I had laying around and just cut off a small piece. In my case, probably about a half an inch. This acts as a spacer, which should make the overflow fit nice and tight. The hose washers with the screens go inside the PVC adapter on the side with the threads. This will prevent bugs and mosquitoes from coming up through the overflow hose and laying eggs in the rain barrel. And if anything damages the screens, they're easy to replace. The street elbow, the spacer, and the hose barb are put in through the outside of the barrel. And then on the inside, the coupling with the screen screws onto that. For the hose bib, I ended up using a large rubber washer, two and a quarter inch outside diameter, but most importantly, one inch inside diameter to fit over the hose bib. The steel washers also have a one inch inner diameter. You can see the order how things go here. We have the hose bib, one steel washer, the rubber washer, then the barrel, then the other steel washer, then the hose adapter goes on the back of the hose bib to keep it tight against the barrel. 
The silicone goes in between the rubber washer and the barrel itself to seal it. I also put a bead of silicone around the inside before I put the steel washer over it. For the lid, I just traced around the threaded portion of the 3 inch PVC adapter. That will be the hole in the top where the water comes in. I started with a pilot hole just large enough to get the jigsaw blade through. It's a good idea to wear your safety equipment, especially if you're using a metal barrel. And a hearing protection is a great idea too, because it can get loud when you cut the hole in the metal. The hole had a bit of a jagged edge when I was done with it, so I put a grinding stone in the drill and just smoothed out the edges. The three inch adapters don't screw tight to each other, so I decided to put a little bit of rubber weather seal in between the top and the bottom pieces just to tighten up the excess slack. I originally just cut a piece of screen that would fit inside the three inch PVC adapters, but the rain came down hard enough, it just blew them right out. So I just took a larger piece of insect screening and put it in between the two before I threaded them together. And that's held up really well. This is how the rain barrel is connected to the downspout. I just cut the downspout, leaving enough room for the flexible extender to have a nice gentle arc. Here you can see it finished and connected to the gutter. This one connects directly to the gutter and the other barrel connects to the downspout. As you can see, it's a gentle slope. The downspout filter is a great idea. It just keeps leaves and debris from getting down into the inlet and clogging the insect screen. And the large hose clamp is what holds the downspout filters onto the three inch PVC fitting. The poly tubing goes on the overflow and the small hose clamp goes over that. I ran about a 15 foot piece out to plants that need water. So when it overflows, it will just go ahead and water those plants and keep it away from the foundation. And finally, I put an optional quick connect on the hose bib just to make taking the hoses on and off a lot easier. Once you're finished, give it a good rinse out and test to make sure there are no leaks. And that's all there is to it. This is Steve, and thanks for watching Uncharted DIY. If you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe and leave comments or questions below. And also check out UnchartedDIY.com where you'll find further information and more detailed how-to projects.